Welcome to the Rachel 23, AKA the modern Rachel, or basically it's the Rachel haircut, right? Lots of layers, mid length, and very much in style right now. We see so many celebrities rocking this look like Jenna Ortega, or we saw it on Selena Gomez, and all of these various models and all of these various articles. The styling is very much a part of it. Um, and it is very much what showcases that throwback 90s, early 2000s. You can absolutely create this with the razor if you want kind of a softer feathered edge, which I think would be lovely, but I really want to show off that like hit. Um, so that's where you're gonna gauge it per client and really make it make sense for your client because everything's about suitability first, right? We can teach the look, but then it's taking that look and making it suitable for your client. Now, it, as I'm establishing the perimeter, I'm pulling everything to zero degrees. So just lifting that up, I can do this all in one section because I'm looking at the thickness, not here in my section, but down here in my fingers. And if it's too thick, then I'm going to take those subsections. So now I have these two beautiful visual guides right here that I can use um, as I'm cutting through the back. I do need to re-wet this a little bit. Exactly at a 90 from that new section using my guide right there, moving my new hair away, you can see my guide. And I'm going to begin, well, let me make sure that my elevation is correct. Comb, 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 cut, as Vidal says, right? And then checking your guide and going in with just a little bit of that serrated edge, making my tension nice and strong and working around. I turned her so that I could stay in the same place, but essentially I'm standing right in front of my section now, or I could even afford to take a little bit bigger of a section, but only take in your hand what you feel confident with. Okay, so if you're worried about this corner, you could make this a little bit more modern by doing square layers back here, but you will get less of that like layer coming in through the front. Um, but sometimes it's nice to be a little bit cautious around the ears if your client like wants to go there but maybe not fully commit, right? We have less work to do later. Always working with the end in mind. Cool, same exact thing, opposite side. Now I notice my hand positioning on this side is a little bit different. So when you're working this way, my ear fingertips are up and fingertips are pointing down. But exact same thing, it just allows you to kind of stand in the exact same place and look for balance. That way you're working this way, then this way. And same, same. Making sure that all of those little layers at that top layer area are all balanced and then it should be good all the way through. So now that we've got this established, we're gonna work on our next shape and what's gonna sit on top of this. And then all of that is gonna give us inspiration for the front. So our next shape that's going to sit on top of this is another layered look, but instead of taking those vertical sections, cause we want this to do a very specific flip, right? Um, and a very specific something underneath. So we're using this as a visual guide only, this underneath part. And I'm visually thinking to myself, I want a bit, uh, maybe like a inch of overhang, okay? Maybe even a little less, creating a concave layer. So, so just one very blunt section for visual reference, and then we'll go through and I'll do like my point cutting. But see how when this falls, you've got that overhang here. And you know what? I think I could even afford to go a little bit shorter um, with how much uh, disconnection we have, but I love where these shorter layers are hitting. So what I'm gonna do to kind of reference off of that, or to kind of like adjust that, is adjust my cutting angle. But I liked where this layer was, so we didn't cut that. But just by kind of changing that angle a little bit, we get a little bit less of that disconnection, and it's right about perfect. And so it's still kind of considered a concave layer because you still have short to long, but I'm kind of not really angling my fingers in so much because I really did feel like that gave us too much disconnection. Now, I'm going to use this kind of like, w the way that I want to see the layers in the front here as my guide. And then when I let it go, you can see that little flip and what we wanna see in those layers right there. 
So that's why I do the side separate from the back is because the ends and the side, you're working with a lot more hair in the back typically. So I'm very cautiously working through and visually looking at that layer, looking at these layers to see kind of exactly where I want them to go, right? You can kind of see it there. I'm going to do a deep point cut and keep the disconnection, but start to kind of almost connect it. And then from there, bringing it straight, kind of you're down more at like a 45, because if we go right here and cut, you're gonna end up with less. I feel like sometimes I remember back in the day that would happen um, and it'd be really bulky through the top and just not quite enough hair down in the underneath. So I love, that's what I love about just leaving a little bit of extra hair because now it's like your artistry. Um, all you need to do, it's just almost dividing them in half. If they have thicker hair or if that's a, they have a bigger head and they have more sections in there, you can obviously do more sections. But we're taking our guide from the back. I'm gonna get rid of some of that length so we can see what we're doing. Over directing back, 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 back. So now I'm gonna go in with some deep point cutting and I am leaving just a little bit of extra length through these layers, but I'm regathering, cutting parallel to the floor. Okay, so I go point cut this way, point cut the back way. Again, up and parallel to the floor, point cutting towards my knuckles, point cutting back towards my fingers. And then my last section, and I'm over directing this all the way back as well. Because what I want to do is create something that's a little bit longer here. Get rid of that extra length. And then go in for your cutting line, fingertips flat, flat horizontal to the floor, cutting towards your knuckles and back again. And I'm just gonna go in and kind of gather everything together and do Little bit more point cutting through here. Looks nice, looks soft. It's a lot of layers and she's got a thick head of hair which is so perfect for this look. It's exactly what it calls for. Tons of layers and a thick head of hair. It'll really help them feel like they have a little bit thicker hair than they might. So she has a tiny bit more of a fringe, bringing this over directing it and kind of like just making sure everything balances and looks pretty. And now I've got that nice big sweeping fringe, bringing it all the way over, but this bit is going to be quite disconnected from the rest. So we're gonna kind of section this in a way that you, you don't wanna section it the same way you did the haircut because you wanna kind of, at this point with the blow dry, tie everything in together, but we're gonna blow dry it 90s style with a round brush. Now this is truly my in-salon quick version of this type of a blow dry because it's literally only one section that I pre-section out and the rest is just some subsectioning. And when I'm over directing it all the way up and I'm rolling my brush under, when I brush it out, it's automatically a flip. <laughs> I remember being like, oh my gosh, for the longest time. I just don't want those like mushroomy layers and now it's like, Bring on the mushroomy layers. Um, it's just preference. But like I said, if you have a client with a little bit of thinner hair, you might not even need to do this step. But my girl has got a lot of thick, beautiful hair, which is perfect because it does that hit and flip so well, where it's that nice, like almost a bubble of volume here and that beautiful flip through the ends. Um, we did lots of over directing um, to give her all of that beautiful root lift. And I'm really just going around through her top layers and kind of just like reinforcing the shape, um, not cutting anything new or different. Just dialing in, reinforcing really, reinforcing, reinforcing, lightening, all of that. But you don't wanna lighten it too much because I think that's part of the charm is that you can get this kind of a shape and this kind of a blowout from, um, you know, from a very layered look. So anyway, so after this, after I kind of go in, chip away until I feel content, I am gonna do some iron bends in the hair so it doesn't, it's not typical like actual flashback 
to the Rachel. Um, we're gonna give it a little bit of a modern flair so we can do this cool trend that we're seeing without it feeling like a total recreation of something, <laughs> right, from back in the day. So, like I said, just kind of reinforcing and lightening the load, deep point cutting, but not really changing anything, and just kind of like encourage. Elevate a little lower to see like how it's gonna look, and then tying in that disconnection in through that stronger ends right there. They're there, but just to kind of really say, this is your haircut to the client and kind of give them something that is unique to them, those front pieces. You can be like, hey, I think we need more. And the client will be like, yeah, I think we do need more. Well, that was the Rachel 23.